Hey everyone, welcome back. We're here at the bench today with my latest project, an enhanced IV curve tracer. I've done a previous video using the IV curve tracer or octopus that I already have. Uh, I purchased it on eBay. This is it here. Uh, it's nice, compact, works well, but I wanted to build my own and add a few things to it. So that's what we have here. Uh, this curve tracer will support eight different settings as opposed to the four that I had before. It also supports limiting the negative voltage swing. There's a diode across the uh, the device under test outputs. It'll also let me test two devices uh, at once and let me switch back and forth between them. So it makes it easy to compare different components. I built this in a nice sturdy metal box. So it's got some good weight to it and we take a look on the back it looks a little ugly because I misdrilled everything but that's all right just filled them in with some hot glue and we've got our IEC power connector there uh, it took me a couple weeks to do this working on and off and I think it came out pretty good so let's take a look inside of it so you can see how I put it together. And then after that, we'll hook it up to an oscilloscope and just test a few components out on it so you can see it working. All right, so this is the inside of the curve tracer. We've got a power transformer here. That's going to provide 6, 12, and 24 volts. Back at the front panel. And the circuit board here is where I've got my current, li current limiting resistors set up for the different ranges. Uh, there's an 8-pin eight eight pin dip socket here that is not being used at the moment. That's for an op-amp to provide 10x gain on the Y channel. I had it hooked up and while it did amplify uh, because of the power supply I was using, which is this dual rail 15 volt switch mode power supply, the noise it was outputting was too much and defeated the purpose of the amplification. So we just took that out and have that bypassed. So the wires are all in place there. And if I can come up with a better power supply in the future to put in there, I may add that back in. But it works fine the way it is. Let's plug it in, test some components, see how it looks. Before we put a few components on it to test, I thought I'd just show the uh, voltage and current ranges that are on it. So I'm using my old CircuitMate DM27XL multimeter. This meter is about 30, 40 years old. It's the first digital multimeter I got. Uh, surprisingly still very accurate and it works. So don't use it on a general basis, but I thought it'd be fun to bring out for this. First range, if you notice the ranges are labeled voltage and and milliamps, so the first range is 8 volts, 10 milliamps. Uh, that 8 volts is the peak-to-peak -peak swing as opposed to the, the RMS AC voltage. But if we look here, the first setting, we can see we're getting 6 volts. Next one, we've got 12. This is 12. And then the next is... And the next one is 24 volts. And the second range, we've got 24 volts, 12, and then we've got 6, and 6 again. And if we look at the current limiting we have going on, let's go over here to, I don't think I can use this meter. I think this meter only does DC milliamps. Hold on a second while I get a meter that can show us AC milliamps. All right, I switched over to my Unity UT39E+. If we go to the first range, it says 10 milliamps, and we've got 10.2. Next one is 5. 10. And 5. Let's there we go, and five. 
and the top range we've got over here 10 15 15 and 5 they're not exact they don't need to be exact they're close enough voltage and current limiting look good for the two different ranges so let's bring out the oscilloscope hook it up and throw a few components on it all right so we've got the curve tracer hooked up to the oscilloscope i'm using my tech 2215a 60 megahertz scope this curve tracer has like my other one had is a width control i can adjust the voltage display if I want. For 8 and 16 volts it's not that big a deal. If I go up to 16 volts I can always go down another scale. If we go up to 33 volts however that's always off the scale so it's good that I can just use the width control and pull that back back into the display. There we go, let's go back to eight. All right. This is the eight volt, 10 milliamp scale. Got some components here. I'm not gonna do an in-depth explanation of stuff. Um, I'll put a link to my video where I did a lot of talking about using a curve tracer and testing components. Uh, I just wanna show you basically that this works. We're gonna hook up to a diode here. Uh, this is the diode I pulled out of some piece of equipment. I don't know anything about it. But as we can see, got a characteristic diode curve. Uh, it's not quite as sharp as most silicon diodes, but it's definitely a diode. Now what the next thing we can do is I can hook up to another component. So let's hook up to this one. And I can switch between the two. It's another diode. And you can see it's forward voltage is a little different. This one, the first diode has a lower forward voltage than the other one. And let's uh, let's see if we can't. See if we can zoom in on that a bit and just see better here. So we can see these are they're both diodes. They're definitely different types of diodes. If you're looking to maybe match components, this at least let you take two of them and switch between them, uh, which is easier than constantly switching leads back and forth. And we could go and we could figure out the difference in forward voltage between the two of these. Uh, we can go up to 16 volt range, which is only five milliamps of current. And we can see the current portion of it drops down. I'm gonna bring this back out here like this. Bring that up so you can see a little bit clearer. And the, uh, the, the negative voltage limit throws a diode across the device on the test terminal. So if I kick that in, You know, we can see that um, what we what we would get if I don't if I took one of the devices out here and just showed the diode. It's a standard silicon diode curve, just in reverse. But this is good. It'll it'll limit the negative voltage swing to about 0.6 volts. Uh, so if you have components that are sensitive to negative voltage you can just click that into the circuit and it will limit that and i've got a capacitor here this is a 100 microfarad let's just toss that on there so we can see a capacitor with it and And we get the standard 
capacitor curve. So it's working. It's working, it's working well. Um, I like the ability to switch between two different devices on it. Um, like I said, I've got more, more current voltage ranges. So in total, I can do at 8 volts, I can do 5, 10, and 15 milliamps. At 16 volts, I can do 5, 10, and 15 milliamps. And at 32 slash 33 volts, that I can do 5 and 10 milliamps. A little bit more useful range. For an indicator, like I did with my 10 megahertz reference, I opted not to put an LED, but I've got a neon lamp indicator. It's a little old school. I like it. That's about it. This came out good. Really happy with it. Uh, it'll be a nice addition to the bench. Need to move some stuff around so I can put it up there uh, where it's easily accessible. I hope to get a lot of use out of it. Any questions, comments, whatnot, leave it down below. I'm happy to answer whatever I can. Until next time, take care.